Hello, everybody, and welcome. My name is Joe Renee Feeler, and this is our weekly podcast. It is mid to late December 2018, and whenever you're listening to this, I would recommend that you trust that it's the perfect time, okay? Okay, so um, what are we going to do here today? I don't know, but I sense that Mary Magdalene um, is wanting to be part of the message today, and that feels wonderful. And I would like to start off with a brief um, connection exercise so that we can I want to say get more into our skin here, all the way into our body suit. Some of us tend to be more upper chakra oriented, so our energy uh, field tends to sort of slide up, and that's not a great way of going through humanity, okay? I do have a cold um, that started like Wednesday of last week, so I apologize for my cough. Um, Yeah, so in advance, (laughs) all right? Okay, so let's do um, something here. Let's close our eyes and just focus on our breathing for a moment. Oh, that's nice. Okay. I would like you to imagine that as you're breathing here, that within you but behind you there is a beautiful comfortable chair it's like the ideal chair that you would design or you would pick out or maybe a favorite chair you already have and it's sort of just waiting there for you to to take a rest okay okay there you go sit right in it okay nice job It's hard in this reality, so it's it's nice to have a place where you can park yourself and just sit for a bit. Okay, very good. Okay, nice. So while you're while you're doing that, while you're sitting, we're gonna we're going to adjust your body energy field and just really almost like grab it so that it's more centered in your body and that your energy field is reaching all the way down to the toes on your feet and the soles of your feet and deeper. Okay, good. And now automatically when we do that, you can feel a little sort of naked or exposed in your upper chakras. So we're going to expand your energy field so that it covers all of you and that your humanness is in the center of the sphere, the ball of energy that you reside in while you're here. Okay, good. See, it's all taken care of, right? There's a system designed for you in this reality. (sighs) Designed for your well-being, designed for a sense of peace and comfort, designed as a sense and a location, literally like a physical location. You are the physical location of your best well-being your sense of ingenuity and originality and creativity and discernment and work ethic and all of those things, motivation. You have far more control over this field than you think you do. Okay, I can just feel the message just like sliding right into place here. Okay, very good. Um, I do want to, okay, stay right there. (laughs) You're good. We're just going to stay from here while we have our experience today with this message. Okay, for those that are new, Um, I'm sort of like a near-death experiencer in terms of maybe how you can understand my connection that is very supernatural, but I didn't have any accident. I didn't have any near-death experience. That's the best way that I can explain it. So any sort of um, teachings or wisdom that come through is not based on any human study that I did as Jill in my spare time I listened to. Um, (laughs) ideology (laughs) sorts of podcasts um, and things that make me think about this reality but it isn't in the realm of consciousness it isn't it isn't new age Um, so yes I do this for a living but that isn't what I do in my other ways of being Jill other than my work so I'm a bit unusual um, in many ways and hopefully that's to your advantage so if something I say or something I offer happens to coincide with something else you know if you are a a seeker or a student of consciousness then it would be by coincidence not because i've i've trained in a similar way to maybe your other teacher okay so maybe it's confirmation for you but what i really love is when we share a completely different perspective 
um, because that is definitely an offer to me given, uh, well, it is an offer to me. It's part of what I bring into this reality. I'm here to offer this reality another way to know itself as inherently connected to source energy. And I love it. I love it. I, what, a, what, a, what a perfect idea, right? Um, and I feel very blessed uh, to be a part of it and very blessed to be connected with so many of you um, that are realizing what you're really looking for and what you've always uh, felt is true for you. It's, it's just perfect, this system of us connecting and supporting each other here. So nice job. Okay, so from right where we were there, and I, I do feel the need to cough and my voice feels shaky because I want to cough so bad. So I'm going to mute the microphone here for the live audience. I'm going to... Okay, there we go. Alrighty. Oh, okay. Mm, okay. So I'm just going to slide deeper into myself so that I can feel what we're going to talk about today. No, really? Okay, that's funny. They're like, how about a predictions message for 2019, Jill? Okay. <laughs> I'm in. <laughs> All right. So feel, always feels those always feel like the scariest ones because uh, some people say you didn't predict anything um, but we don't operate on the surface guys we're going deeper so it's not gonna we don't want to tickle your brain um, we want to tickle your soul <laughs> your eternal self within your human energy field okay very good all right Jesus is saying, should we start off by saying we predict? And I'm like, yeah, we can, whatever, whatever we want to do. Um, but Mary Magdalene wants to speak first. It's such an honor to, oh, whoops, hang on. I didn't, did I? Okay, sorry, sorry, Connie. Um, when, now a, a temptation now to go back to the video and I have the archives. Thank you. I just noticed I felt you guys saying, wait, the microphone. That's the risk of me pausing to cough and things like that. So I apologize. I sometimes hit it and I swear that I hit it to unmute and then it, it didn't unmute. So I apologize. Okay, so we're going to do a, predictin, a prediction episode here, prediction podcast for 2019. And I, I do tend to like these and I know that they're popular. So that part's fun too, because I, when you guys are already looking for something, it's easier to, to hand you something that obviously we hope is of value. Okay, so Mary Magdalene is gonna start off here as we relax. Ah, oh, very good. In Metatron. Yeah, thank you for the heads up. He's saying there's going to be some people that don't want to hear what you have to say today. Okay, that's good. <laughs> that's good to know, right? So for some of you that are a bit more delicate, uh, only like good news, um, you may want to just check yourself before you go forward and um, maybe come back to it later when you're feeling stronger in your light. And hopefully that connection exercise that we did at the very beginning um, will help with that. Okay. Yes, I am exactly. I'm going to go back and make sure I turn this guy on. Yes. Okay. All right. I think I'm prepared. Okay. Hmm. Okay, good. Some of the experiences and we would say experiments on earth that began around 2012 related to the Mayan calendar have now uh, completed their course. So for some of you that have felt quite stable from 2012 to 2018, and then maybe around 2018, maybe some of you around 2016, you started to feel a sense of um, unsettled energy within yourself. And it has been um, an opportunity for really looking at where is your stability coming from? Is it coming from a certain person in office? Is it coming from a certain sense of community? Is it coming from comforting teachings or comforting messages coming from different spiritual messengers in your reality? Where is your source of, of comfort? Where is your source of inspiration? Where is your sense of um, motivation uh, to take on your personal sovereignty 
and act in a way that it, that is personally responsible. And of course, responsibility is just responding to your abilities, th hopefully through actions, hopefully through actually taking steps versus just talking about them or just thinking about them. Okay. So as these experiments are um, wrapping up based on their stated objective being um, met in some cases, um, based on the stated objective uh, no longer uh, feeling as relevant or as interesting, there is um, more attention placed on the bigger projects going on on Earth, okay? <sighs> okay. I see it. <laughs> Metatron just said, you see that edge right there, Jill? Yes, I do. An edge to my human consciousness, and I'm walking right up to it so that we can walk right into the unknown. Okay. Hmm. Oh, this feels so important. There's, there's like these turnstiles and gates that I'm seeing in my my divine mind's eye as this, this is a very different edge than I've ever been at before. I can't wait to walk through with you guys as my base of my skull is just like needing a little lovey right there. Okay. Got uh, whew, okay. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay, I gotta show you guys behind the scenes here or tell you guys what's going on. So I know I'm spinning a little bit. I'm feeling a little like, like I'm uh, twisting like an orbit in my chair. Um, Metatron just said, you need to show them your, your pass or your like credentials. And, um, and Mary Magdalene said, remember, it's, it's your heart vibration or it's, it's your orientation. Okay. Okay, we're all good. We're through. And you're all coming with me because I'm not going to hold anything back. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Okay. All right. Gabriel. Hello. He just said this is about to get more serious. Okay. You've been doing you, your life, more solo and more alone than you realize. Just feel that for a moment. That where you are right now is 80% soul signature wiring, maybe 10% uh, what you know as your humanness, and 10% grace that you allow yourself in this reality. So that soul signature wiring is not something you need to know. It's not something you need to study. And for a group like this here, may be completely untethered to any sort of so-called past life or even parallel life experiences. This is a journey. Your incarnation right now is a journey unlike you are having in any other reality, in any other quote unquote time, physical or non-physical in time or beyond the time space continuum. This is a one of a kind journey. Some of the experience uh, experiments and experiences that are wrapping up are this notion that you need to study past lives, which of course are not past. Um, that alone is a is a something to be aware of, right? This journey came from out of time. Regardless of whether you came as your as the energy that is animating you, regardless of you came of whether you came straight from source energy, or whether you came as a result of a the recycle bin experience that we talked about in podcast numbers. 191 and 192. You choosing to experience this message right now, whenever that now is for you, is your validation 
of the completely radical, <laughs> one-of-a-kind journey that you are having in this lifetime. You are untethered to your, to your genetics. You are untethered to any other realities. You are only tethered truly to your source energy. You are free to be you. You have all the equipment that you could ever dream of. And there are many, many things that can hold you back, as you already know. The earthly experiences that you've had about perhaps not being seen, not being heard, not having things go the way that you would like, that will likely not change going forward. You may not get full disclosure. You may not get a level of human awakening that you wish to have. You may not get a level of friend and family awakening that you wish you had for them, a wish for them and a wish for you. You may be going forward just as you have been going forward as your one. So one of the other experiments that's winding down is that a community is needed, like need, not wanted, needed in order to like stick together and um, have each other's backs and all those things. Where you have that, that's great. But you don't need it as much as you think you do. And in some cases, it hasn't benefited you as much as you maybe think it has. And in some cases, those communities have actually held you back. We can feel some of you asking us, how would I know the difference? By being willing to be honest with yourself about whether you are staying in communities more for the social benefit than for the consciousness raising and um, heart expanding, mind expanding, motivation expanding, um, honor of your one, honor of your one. That has been the biggest compromise that's been made in some of these communities is that they revolve around somebody else's one but they don't do nearly enough to support the individual ones that all of the members are. Some of them actually ask the membership ones to sacrifice their own growth, their own ambitions, their own interests for the sake of some leader oriented one. And is all of that okay? Yeah, but is it really what you want? Is it really what you want going forward? Now the upside to going forward in this way of recognizing how solo you actually are and have always been is that it allows more authenticity for your originality originality of your soul signature, originality of your human temperament and personality and what makes you laugh and what makes you cry and what makes you angry. It leaves you more room to be this authentic, amazing, and sometimes quirky you. Okay, that sounds exciting, hopefully. Okay. The upside to this, yeah, there are many, we just mentioned one, it feels more fun for you and more real to you. Also, it is easier for others that are also embracing this level of consciousness, this level of source energy with as their personal connection to it, you are better able to see each other. I'm just looking over at Archangel Gabriel and I'm saying, why does this matter? 
because you have so much expansion available to you. And what we've learned in those experiments that, that have been going on within your linear time for um, six years, sometimes four years, etc., is that it, it's probably tapped out how much expansion it's offering. So you get to decide. You have the free will to decide where you play and how you play and whether you give your one more permission to be its divine self in your reality. There are so many distorted notions over what an enlightened self looks like. You're not a student. I, it's impossible for me to look at you as a student when all I see when I look at you is a fellow master who happens to be on earth where things get confusing and it doesn't always look like mastery. We know that. And you obviously know that for yourself, for your one, right? Okay, so you, so I feel some of you asking, so I don't have to fix X, Y, and Z in my life or in my human? Nope. None of those things are actually in your way of your soul signature, so they can just stay right there. You may actually find the more that you trust um, that chair that we talked about at the beginning in the connection exercise, you may actually see that some of those so-called flaws or so-called cracks are actually perfectly designed not just for you, but by you to further assist your divine energy in being its one here. So perfection, idealism, um, some drawn up set of ideal qualities of an enlightened person, those, <laughs> yeah, you can throw those in the trash. They, they may never apply to you. That may not be why you're here. <laughs> Jesus just said, and they're boring. It's boring to follow somebody else's, somebody else's sort of caricature of what a conscious person is. Nice. Okay. This just got radical, right? Okay. Okay. Yes, Mary Magdalene is right here. So in terms of specific expectations that, that we think will be helpful for you in 2019, the chaos continues, the unpredictability continues, the sense of, of wait, what sorts of surprises will continue. Um, hopefully some of those surprises are positive as you further explore you through your embodiment of, of you, the real you, the part of you that you may have been holding back on because you felt like maybe that layer of you or those layers of you weren't, weren't spiritual enough or weren't lovable enough. So you've been hiding them away in a closet, but it's actually maybe the parts of you that bring you the most joy, dark humor or sarcasm or whatever. It, we promise you it all works. Nothing you've ever been or ever will be, could ever get in the way of your soul signature, of your eternal self. So why not let it all bubble up to the surface? Why not let your sense of humor be right there, no matter how weird or wacky or just odd it may be? You're going to get to know yourself the more that you let you play in the oddities of being you. So are there sort of rules that we would advise to go along with this? I mean, there's a basic set of rules in terms of staying out of a Watiko vibration and, and they would be that the real you, the real eternal energy of you loves you so much and loves all life so much. It values the human experience Let's repeat that one. It's super important. It values, even cherishes the human experience and the human race. In other words, to be super blunt, it does not glorify death and it does not diminish the meaningfulness, the inherent meaningfulness of life. Okay. 
another sort of rule that we could offer is that your actions are not intended to harm self or harm another person. Your actions and intentions are intended to lift you up into a, a greater state of being, a more glorious state of your humanness, and hopefully um, do the same for others, or at least not put anyone else lower than they currently are as a result of your moving forward, okay? So there isn't a you move ahead at the expense of someone else. You moving ahead has the potential of, of helping others move ahead, or it at least has the, has the um, neutrality of not, harm, not putting anyone further back than where they are presently, okay? That's like a cosmic rule right there of, of what is positive and what is progressive and what isn't. It is regressive to ask anyone to diminish their light, diminish their beingness, diminish their greatness for the benefit of somebody else moving forward and having a turn. That's regressive, very outdated and extremely unnecessary. Sadly, that experiment um, is widely um, popular right now and, and very much up and running on um, more industrialized aspects of Earth. The, the so-called modern parts of Earth are, are um, pockets of it are um, deep in an experiment of that variety of how it's, it's from our perspective, what it ends up looking like is how much can we hold back talent and ability and greatness for the sake of a group that is feeling compromised. They're not really compromised, but they feel like they are. And there's a whole bunch of versions of this. Okay, very good. <clears throat> okay. <sighs> okay. Some of the systems that you've been waiting for to sort of fall apart <laughs> because they felt unsustainable or unfair or malicious, um, you will start to notice more and more alternatives coming online that could replace them over time, but we'll see. Um, those are sort of like pilot projects and the experiments that are taking place, whether it's cryptocurrency or other things, and you'll, you'll feel very easily the, the champions of those pilot projects because they live and breathe it as if it's the only thing going on in their lives. There's a lot of champions of these projects and they're, they can be extremely focused. Um, so if you don't feel passionate about it, don't, you know, try not to get caught up um, in their passion. Um, you can support someone without having to, to hand over your life and all of your free time to something. I thought I turned off that reminder. Okay, cough coming up. Hang on. <coughs> okay. Oh my gosh, you guys. Okay. Yeah, I'm just, I'm noticing this weird, uh, annoying tension again in my back. As if, as if it's like, you can't go any further than this. And I'm like, damn it. Yes, we can. And we will. Okay, let me go deeper into this because I know there's more that, that's more yummy than what we've gotten so far. <sighs> okay. Hmm. Okay, give me a moment. I'm sorry. There's a lot going on behind the scenes. Hmm. Hmm. nice okay okay those of you that have um, stopped trying to be nice um, will make more progress in your own sense of claiming and being your sovereign version of your eternal self energy in your human form those of you also similarly that will um, do as much as you can independently on your own um, 
again, self-responsibility, uh, not asking other to, others to take care of you, <laughs> that sort of thing. You will feel more of your own strength, more of your own um, divine power. I want to say not the type of power that's used against someone, but the power that is that is used for uh, self and without and a, a burden placed on other people. That strength is so powerful right now. So this is scary though, because a lot of us have felt tremendous support um, in others from others, and where they're willing and and delighted to support you, that's that's one thing. But where you you know it's a burden on them and it doesn't feel fair to you, you you'll probably want to reevaluate those things, and it could take some time before you feel that sense of independence for yourself. But it's it's worth it, even if it's just adding a little bit more independence than, than you currently have. It will help you believe um, in your literally eternal self energy in this reality because it's so hard here. Okay, it's like, hey, I can do it. Uh, that belief in yourself is is imperative. For those that are courageous enough to follow these ideas through to your own embodiment of them, there is very little holding you back. And some of you are actually resisting and you have been resisting moving forward is because you're terrified of the sense of isolation and loneliness. It actually doesn't have to be that bad. Um, some of you built within your within your structure a, a, a a divine system of um, being independent and being comfortable in your one and feeling sacredness in this the silence of your own mind and the solid the the grace of solitude that's available to you in your life when you're not surrounded by the chatter and the noise of maybe communities that you've outgrown or ideas that you've outgrown or practices and protocol that don't even make sense anymore. Um, but maybe they once did, and that's okay. Um, so it's it's bold, and it's very badass to give yourself this sort of autonomy and authority that we're describing. You're better at being a, a lone wolf than you realize, and it, it doesn't have to be alone in a cave, right? I mean, technology allows you to have interactions like this, where you feel extremely seen and heard and supported. Um, but it won't always that level of support won't always look the way you think it should, or the way you want it to. But support is support, and it's offered to you, and you can accept it or reject it. But this it's like we want you to get uncomfortable. We're encouraging you to get more and more uncomfortable with some of the outdated ideas that have kept you feeling safe. Earth is not a safe place, you guys. So anything that you've been drawn towards because it feels safe and predictable is is like a playpen. Sorry, I mean, I'm this Archangel Michael. Oh, <laughs> okay, that's good. This Archangel Michael sense of who you are, not who you call in, but that you're calling yourself in as the Archangel Michael energy that you have access to. Okay, that's a completely different model that you're that when you call in Archangel Michael or something like that, you're actually calling in layers of you to to be one in your one. Yeah. I know. <laughs> okay. Okay. So it, it can change everything about what you feel you have access to authority over and permission of in your one. And we're begging you to not ask the rest of the world to make it comfortable for you. Self care, self comfort, what you know, what strikes your fancy in terms of keeping you um, in a in a healthy, <laughs> healthy position, those are required, right? 
And it's up to you to find out what that is and put them in place and get the support that you need and um, make it fair for the person offering that support and not asking them to extend themselves farther than they're wanting to go. Yeah, Mary Magdalene, she was saying, can I go back to the, the stop being nice part? Yes, of course. Being nice is overrated when you are a pioneer. There are so many times in my Mary Magdalene energy that I felt like such a curse word coming bitch. But it also felt good. It felt strong. And it wasn't for the intention of, of being bitchy. It was for the intention of honoring my one and not being willing to compromise myself to fit in or to be seen as nice um, or to be even seen as pleasant. Because some of the sort of work that I felt led to to do and the energy I felt led to be was so uncharacteristic of any of the roles on the planet at that time. And I know you can relate to that. So some of you, you recognize in yourself this radical sort of nature of who and what you are, and you've made yourself actually more comfortable around others by creating this very nice, pleasant persona. But at some point, that um, drive to be nice may be outnumbered by the drive within you to be you. Which maybe isn't always nice and isn't always pleasant and maybe says and thinks uncomfortable things that, are, um, that don't make other people feel safe and comfortable, right? So no one will take away uh, what Archangel Michael and that was Archangel Gabriel as well were describing as the playpens. No one's going to take those away. But some of you may wander out, right? And <laughs> I actually, part of me as Mary doesn't like it that they called it a playpen because it seems so um, condescending. Um, yeah, and Archangel Gabriel is just saying, but they can be so much more Mary. So sometimes it is harsh words that, that allow within the density of the human to sort of maybe be offended for a moment and then sort of think about it and go, you yeah, know, maybe, maybe that's true. Maybe I've been hiding out in, in a safe zone in a world that is not safe and I knew it wouldn't be safe. No one comes to earth for safety. Safety is not offered here. It's not guaranteed here. I mean, just the idea that, that you have a body that can die and that it's a 100% mortality rate. That's, I mean, that the statistics speak for themselves, okay? <sighs> okay. So when you stop craving safety, you can crave other things. Love truth, sovereignty, hopefully your own, and tending to your energy field in a way that feels perhaps as um, necessary as it is for you to be this extremely pioneering light that you are in your world. You being this radical one may not mean that the world sees you. Yeah, thank you, Jesus. He was just saying, you know, let me, yeah, I'm asking who's going to say it. I, he's asking me to say it. And this came up in a session on Monday, I think it was, maybe it was Sunday. Anyway, it's so, so was like, wow, when he said it to this client. Um, had he not been, had Jesus not been murdered, we may not even be talking about him. Just think about that. That's huge. We would, <laughs> our group would, <laughs> because there's a, there's a lot of other amazings, uh, amazing bringers of light that, that have gone down in history that have not been murdered, but, but they stood out. He did stand out. But for the, the recorded narrative that everybody repeats back, what got their attention was 
not only that he was killed for his beliefs in radicalism, um, but that, you know, obviously, obviously the, the resurrection and so forth, which was real. It was very real. The reason that we're talking about this part is that sometimes this reality requires something so extreme to get its attention and therefore getting its attention, getting your reality's attention on a level that feels uh, confirming to you may not be worth it, may not be possible, number one, and may not be worth it, number two. The, the, the consequence, the, literally the sacrifice is just too great. So the alternative approach is for you to let it be real, for you to know that your radicalism, that your not radicalism that harms others, but radicalism that literally busts down doors of energetic gateways, etc. Whatever you're drawn to, that sort of like, okay, we're in here now, woohoo! Like we we made our way in. We the gatekeepers didn't stop us. We're in a whole new territory. Let's create. Let's be. Let's explore this. Right. That passion, that excitement over over your own personal growth and change and evolution. And maybe even as simple as liking yourself, yourself, your one, your human, liking your human more could be satisfying enough. It, it isn't the same, we totally get it, as the world turning its eyes towards you and saying, oh, wow, you're special, you're amazing. Because that would feel so good to many of you. And some of you don't want the don't want the whole world to look at you, but you want somebody that matters to look at you and say, Wow, I see you. You're special. But you know what? Wow. I see you. You're special. And yes, you can all be special. Because you're all a glorious inherently. You are a glorious one. So you have your one of your eternal self in combination with the one of your human, your you, and together that's where magic happens. Without your human, your eternal self is limited in its ability to interact, create, design, play in, orchestrate, support, anything else in this reality. You're the, you're the match to your eternal self and your eternal self designed you. When we talk about the team, Jill's team, your team, etc., we're talking about you. you. You are the human representation of your team. And some of you have been in that, what we've been calling the playpen, studying underneath someone else about what they think it means to be enlightened and what they think it means to be conscious. Jill peeked in that playpen when she first got a taste of what she had access to in terms of innate wisdom and direct source energy consciousness. And she saw what was going on in there. She was kind of like, well, maybe I should take some classes. Maybe I should, maybe I should get, get uh, certified in, in whatever this is that I am. She peeked in there and said, oh, uh-uh. We have no judgment about any of you that have made a different choice for yourself and jumped in as a student of something or someone to try to learn more about consciousness, etc., but there's many downsides to that approach. And that's why we're sort of begging you <laughs> to, to jump out of the playpen. It's it literally the, the edge of it is about up to your knee. Anyway, there will be zero effort in jumping out. But you may not be seen as very nice. And you may not be seen as very pleasant by walking away from something that you thought you were committed to. And some of you may have trouble with that even yourself that you feel like you're a quitter. Um, 
I mean, you could judge yourself in that way, but we just look at it as you decided it's not helping you anymore. And maybe there's something else that's better that maybe has nothing to do with studying. You're not here on earth to study these other teachings. You can, and some of you have, and some of you are, and some of you will. We're just saying you don't have to. But do you know what? There's a huge profitable industry that has been guiding every single enlightenment experiencer, every seeker into that playpen. Come on over here, everybody. This is what we do next. Doesn't have to be that way. But what is it if it's not that? This is the scary part, perhaps. You get to decide. So maybe 2019 includes uh, packing up all the books that that you're done with (laughs) and that don't bring you joy anymore. Um, or, you know, taking a break from certain things. If it's not pushing your envelope, then maybe you don't want it anymore. It doesn't feel safe to push envelope, push the envelope, though. It, it can feel very scary to a part of you, especially depending on what your inner child has, you've been protecting it from. Right? <sighs> I guess if we had to call 2019 something, it would be a promise of radical light. A promise of broken rules that don't hurt anyone, but that set further your eternal self energy free in your one, let loose in your world to explore and be trusting that not only are you ready to be out there, whatever you want that to mean, you've always been ready. And that sometimes you won't know that until you actually do it, until you actually step out of the playpen and step away from anyone that has been treating you any other way. The power of somebody that you have placed in a superior position above you for whatever reason, the power of their words, how they look at you, how they treat you, how they energetically interact with you is not to be underestimated. And this is the big question that we're asking you to ask yourself. Are they treating you as the master that you are right now? Because that's one of the key reasons why Jill did not jump in that playpen. She knew based on her initial mind-blowing, heart-blowing experiences that she felt like a master in these areas, not out of arrogance, but out of evidence of what she could do and was doing in that very first reading she ever did. It felt to her so real and so personal and so natural, like she'd been doing it her whole life, as if she was born to do it. She was, she respects herself too much to jump into any system that was going to treat her as anything other than the mastery that she felt in the, in that very first reading she ever did in whatever it was, 2008, 2009. She didn't want to feel at home in a system that said, oh no, honey, on earth, everybody has to start here. So we we need to take you back to the beginning. That's great that you've got those abilities, but you don't know enough yet. What if you don't need to know anything? What if the knowledge is downplayed by the experience of the miracle of what you are and what you've always been. How deeply you care about people. How passionately you want your world to be a better place. How easily you love someone even when they've done you wrong. Maybe not all the time, but some of the time. Those are also evidence of the mastery of the energy that you are. 
in the not just the eternal, the all that is, but also that you are connected to as the human that you are, the human representation of the eternal self energy that you also are infinitely. Your brain will have questions. Fine. Your brain will not get answers to everything. Fine. You can decide that that's fine. Because this addiction to knowledge that is the main attraction to that playpen, the attraction of the playpen mainly is, I don't think I know enough yet. I don't think I'm there yet. And everyone that's on the outside of that playpen, basically being their light, they know that that's like a trick <laughs> because they don't feel like they know everything either. And they rarely feel like they're ready. On earth, no one will feel ready. It's not about feeling ready. It's about trusting that you were born ready. That your raw self is glorious and that you don't have to go back in time, back to your childhood of, of when, you, when you feel like you were <laughs> glorious. That won't work anyway. It's starting from the glory that you have always had access to and being it by your tastes and preferences, by your radicalism in radical enough to trust it right now. Start anywhere. Watch out for your brain, especially, sorry, Sam, Sam, no, no, come here, Sam, come. Especially as that, that chaos continues to ensue, it can feel very unstable um, for a lot of you. So your rock, ideally, is, is your one. Self-comfort, uh, self-control in some cases, um, monitoring your brain, and creating habits for you to be your one without any of the trappings that maybe the playpens have offered. We're just asking you to try it. Maybe it's a new experiment that you're trying out in 2019. Radically being your light, your light, your light. Okay, it's there. It is, it, it could not be there. But how? There's that brain. So any of you are saying, how do I do this? That's why you're probably in the playpen. Because you're listening to your brain ask you how, as if that how has to be answered, or more importantly, as if that how can be answered. That's, that's not what's happening here. That's not how this works. There is no how. There's a series of possibilities that, that, that you get to try out and make up as you go along. But that sounds scary. It is scary to go off script from the rest of the human race and be your radical light in a time when humanity doesn't know it is a natural light. That's radical. Okay, okay. Oh, Samson, no, no, come here. Sorry, I think my delivery or install installation guides are here. So I'm just sliding back in here. I don't think we're gonna have time for Q&A today. I'm sorry, you guys. Oh, wow, when I was really going, Sam, you're hurting my ears. I know, okay. All right, so <laughs> sorry for that quick wrap up. That was kind of jarring. <laughs> Sam, hang on. So what I may actually do, oh my God, is pause the recording. I'll say goodbye to you guys that are live and then I'll do a closing. Um, later on this afternoon. Okay, so sorry for that. I love you guys so much. Bye bye for now. <laughs> Part two, that was a really strange and it felt like um, disruptive sort of ending to part one. So let me see if I can get well, I know I can but let me get let me get back to where oh, where we want to be for a closing. I, I do feel like uh, we said what we wanted to say in terms of the the bulk and core essence of the message, but <laughs> was it a prediction message for 2019? I don't know. Um, that's for you guys to decide. It definitely wasn't probably your normal one in terms of like material level earth. This is what to expect and oil prices and things like that. Cause we don't, we don't do that, but others do. So I'm glad that you have access to something like that because it's not going to, you're not going to find it here. Um, but what we do like to go do is go deeper into the esoteric layers of your eternal self and help you match those up 
um, if you will, with your eternal, with your human self, so that there's a tighter fit there between your human expression of you and your eternal self energy, which is also the portal to that is you, you are the portal for your eternal self into this reality. And the less you have between you and your eternal self energy field, the better. Okay. So we like it to be as tight as possible. Um, I had a couple hours here as the, as my, my wiring guys were here adding some ethernet ports and things to just, I mean, contemplate a little bit on, about what was shared. And I, I am feeling like it was a little bit harsh, um, for Archangel Gabriel and Gab Gabriel and Michael to, you know, call something a playpen. Um, but I like how Mary Magdalene added it and et cetera. Anyway, so what is, was it a little bit harsh today? Yes, I think it was. So let's see, let's, let's see if we can make a softer landing here. <sighs> okay. Hmm. Overall, we are here to support the mastery that, that is accessible to you and that is within you. And by being very blunt, about some of the things that we see that maybe have worked for you in the past and we predict that they will not work for you as well going forward into further levels of consciousness and further levels of expansion. It feels right to be very, um, uh, <laughs> very bold about that with you so that you can discern for yourself what works and what doesn't work. Um, but getting over being nice, um, for those of you that that feel um, stuck in that pattern that could be extremely helpful to you. And I'm glad that we did talk about that. We're excited though. And we see, we see with the wholeness that's available to you now, and we see the amazing potential that's available to you going forward. So of course, we're excited about what's available here as well. This wasn't like a rah, rah, here's how far you've come. You've done so great. That that's another, that's other, those are another messages that we've shared. But for this one, the, the treating you like the star athlete that you are, um, feels right. And it does feel good. In some ways, I guess what we're trying to avoid is that after you're done with your human journey, after you're out of your body suit, when you have a clearer vision of about the consciousness range that was available to you, about the energetic depth that was available to you, that that you don't uh, kind of like come to our, to your teams and say, why didn't you tell me? Why didn't, why weren't you harder on me? Um, why, why didn't you tell me that I was, that I was in a playpen pretending I was a student? I mean, what was I thinking? Right? So maybe this is that, <laughs> that, um, that type of message where we, <laughs> where we could say, we did tell you <laughs> on right before the summer solstice in 2018, we told you, um, or whatever you're hearing this, but, yeah. But you are the star athlete and, and we, we do feel like a coach in some ways, but we also feel more like a comrade or an ally. We're always championing you on. The reason that we may have been harder on you today is because you probably asked us to, and because we see what's available. We see that that raw, pure divine energy that you are in your humanness. And we wish that you trusted that more. We wish that you acted on that more. That doesn't have to become your job. That doesn't have to become your profession. We're talking about in your everyday life, in your own sense of, of wonder and magic and glory of who and what you are on an everyday basis amidst all the relationships you have amidst your day job. If you have one, we would love for you to add more of that supernatural vibration energy that is available to you. It, it, it is available to you. You don't have to go back to your youth to get that. It's available to you right now and you can insert it into whatever you are right now. There's nothing wrong with who and what you are right now. Adding to it just feels even more natural and more organic. Okay. Yeah, it's getting dark. <laughs> it's getting dark here. Okay. So thank you so much uh, for hanging in with us today. Oh, it did feel like a rough message. I'm, I'm excited to listen to it again and 
and curious about your responses to this. So anyway, we were, um, yeah, I felt a very different vibration of this message. I'm just going to turn on this ring light really quick. It's going to be probably pretty bright. Oh my God. Oh, it's just so dark. Okay. There we go. Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Light. Um, so, okay. So we have a December solstice special message on December 19th, which worked well with my calendar. So that's why it's that day. And, um, thank you for tuning into today's gifted message. I love doing the gifted messages for those that, um, heard about me talking about subscribe star, something un very strange happened, like within two or three days of me creating my subscribe, subscribe star account, subscribe stars, uh, payment processors, Stripe and PayPal pulled them. In other words, they yanked um, their services. So Subscribestar is no longer offered the privilege of a PayPal payment processor nor a Stripe payment processor. They obviously had their reasons and their private companies and making they can make those decisions, but obviously we got stuck in the middle of it. Um, so subscribe star subscriptions, those of you that are in it, you're in it and you don't, you don't have to worry about it. We're, we're good. Um, but I did want to obviously keep inviting people into the December solstice message. So we're using my member full account, um, for that. So anyway, it's just a strange time, <laughs> a strange time for those of us that content creators, etc. we're getting caught in some strange things right there. Anyway, so we've got the memberful option, and then I'm not sure what will happen with the subscribe star membership going forward. Um, I know that I'll continue offering content to those that are in there and the special uh, messages once a month that we talked about, but I will probably also be offering it to uh, the memberful um, members on a per month basis versus a subscription basis. It well, subscribe star figures out what they're going to do here. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so it could have been a roadblock, but we worked right around it. Um, let's see what else. Thank you for subscribing, whether you're watching this on YouTube or, um, if you're anyway, wherever you're watching this, thank you for subscribing, liking, commenting, etc. It definitely affects the algorithms. And I really appreciate that. And, um, I love watching, uh, reading the comments. And sometimes I feel led to respond to your comments, especially in YouTube. And sometimes I don't, but anyway, I, I do enjoy reading them. And, um, overall, I mean, this is a, I do feel like the day before the solstice message, I do feel like something really important happened today. I don't remember getting to an edge like we got to in today's message. And that feels extremely important. It did feel awkward and a bit clunky from my side. So hopefully it didn't feel that awkward or clunky from your side. I do like new territory. Um, to me, it's always a sign that, that we're getting out there even further. And that's wonderful. Um, it, to me, that means more freedom, more creativity, more authorship and more design originality that we have access to the further and further away from that playpen and the, uh, the deeper and deeper into our own soul signature we get. Okay. All right. I think that's it. Thank you so much, you guys, for those of you joining the December solstice, uh, live event that will be so special and i'm extremely excited about that and it will be available in archive as well okay all right i think that's it for now thanks so much you guys love you bye bye